Did I ever think I'd be here on this big lot, a producer, a director, a star, a choreographer, a mother? Absolutely. A tremendous opportunity for me to relive the actual feat of teaching at a high school of the performing arts. Get on the floor because it's the rhythm. Feel something hot in the air, yeah. It's just a shock, what the shock worth giving. Gonna be an all that fail. Fame has been also a great opportunity for me to develop as a director, as a choreographer, and now as a producer. I was voted when I was 17 years old most versatile in my class. I'm never out of work because I can do so many things. When is the last time you put on your leotards and competed against someone like me? More recently than you might know. Oh, Miss Laird, I know I'm driving you crazy asking you this question, but I must ask you one more time. Would you please dance in the school show for me, please? Leroy, I don't think Mrs. Laird would be interested in performing in a school production. She's a professional. She brings all of her uh, experience as a choreographer, as a teacher, as a leader, as a, a stager. She sees in terms of space that's fascinating and interesting and... Um, she brings more energy to it, more care, than a lot of television directors, perhaps because they've been directing for a long time and it's just sort of formula by now, but nothing is formula with Debbie. My mother, in preparing us for our careers, taught us to view ourselves as individuals and always to work for full development of inherent potential. This is the meaning of life, this is the purpose of life. My mother also took great pains to make sure that artistic expression was a part of our everyday life. My mother gave me a great deal of strength and belief in myself and a sense of myself in the universe. It was never a sense of myself in the community, third ward where we lived, in Houston or in Texas or the United States or in this side of the hemisphere. It was the universe. In this edition of Cover Story, we'll join Debbie Allen on the set of Fame, where she acts, choreographs, and directs. Debbie's career reads like a page from Cinderella, from her first Broadway appearance in Pearly, followed by Raisin and Guys and Dogs. Then came Roots, The Next Generation, the Broadway musical Ain't Misbehavin', and the movie Ragtime. Debbie also won an Emmy for her Fame choreography. Cover Story is going to find out why this 5-2 dynamo casts such a giant shadow on her professional and personal worlds. The Debbie Allen, who married basketball superstar Norm Nixon, and is the mother of daughter Vivi. She's in a very physical business, dancing, and I'm in a very physical business, professional basketball. And I think because we can relate to each other's uh, job situations, it makes it a little easier to appreciate the time that you can get at home. And uh, probably what most people don't understand is that Debbie that's working on fame is totally different from the one that's around the house. My ambition was to become successful as an actress, as a dancer, on Broadway and in films, on television. I never did have any limits about uh, what I wanted to do and where. I just wanted to do it good. In 1984, Debbie Allen was invited to participate in a salute to her hero, Lena Horne, at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C.
Tell me he's lazy. Tell me he's slow. Tell me I'm crazy. Baby, I know. Can't help loving that man. I got from Houston, Texas to New York City by way of Howard University, where I studied speech and drama and classics. And after I graduated cum laude, uh, my father always said it was thank you laude, I um, found my way to New York City and uh, started working immediately. I had a job immediately. That's why the lady is a tramp. I don't like trap games with bounds and earls. Won't go to Harlem in ermine and pearls. Don't dish the dirt with the rest of the girls. No, that's why the lady is a child. I like the free, fresh wind in my hair. Life without care. I'm broke, that's broke. Hate California, it's cold and it's damp. That's why the lady is I went on to do a big musical called Raisin in the Sun, and uh, then I got an agent and uh, started doing commercials, selling everything on television. My first commercial, I was a meter maid uh, for the Goodyear, I think it was Goodyear Rubber for tires or something. And uh, then I, I worked constantly in New York, you know, on stage, on Broadway or off-Broadway, places like the... New York Shakespeare Festival with Joseph Papp or the New Federal Theater with Woody King. Three Girls Three solidified the fact that I could be on network television holding my own number for four or five minutes all by myself. After that experience, I kept getting other jobs. All of these experiences together made me an artist that certainly could do so many different things. And because of my versatility, I was able to go back and forth between the musical theater world, to the musical television world, to the dramatic television world. I think when I choreograph myself, I'm harder on myself than I am on anybody else. I rehearse myself to death. That is when you're a choreographer, you almost, in your mind and with your body, have to be a writer. Because the body and the language of the dance is your language. That is how you communicate. So you have to put it together and write it in, in the dance. And um, sometimes the music can guide you. Sometimes the music is no help at all. But what's important to me is the challenge of creating that design and also the challenge of pulling out of the people that I'm working with, pulling some new things out of them, or pushing them a little bit further. And she can make non-dancers dance, let's put it that way. And that's an inspiration, you know. That's something, when you, sit, when you sit there and you look at someone do this and you go, my God, I can't do that. And she says, yes, you can. I see potential for you to be a dancer. Wherever she is, whether she's cooking or whether she's in the studio or whether she's in the editing room or whether she's in the director's chair, in the back of her mind, she knows where she's going 10 years from now. I have uh, gone for every inch of whatever I can learn and whatever new experience of trying to do something new, taking on new challenges, new responsibilities, um, and trying to rise to the occasion.
can do so many different things. And it's not, uh, it's just who I am. I don't know, my mother developed me that way. She's um, an incredible writer. She was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize for her first book of poetry. She had three children at that time, and she was a home economics major. She made the best apple pie you ever tasted. So I'm from a world of women who do a lot of things, like the Renaissance man. It's the Renaissance women. <laughs> when I had the opportunity to do the episode of Fame, uh, I found a new appreciation for actors and actresses. Uh, it's a very time-consuming business. And it's also very difficult. Uh, I didn't realize how much it went into making one episode of a show. But the other part was uh, she had to choreograph me. So that meant hours of uh, dancing in the studio. And it's pretty tough sometimes to have your wife snapping at you. Come on, give me your attention. success has changed Debbie uh, in very subtle ways she has a lot of responsibility Debbie must do many things in a day and so she has adopted a more authoritative posture which is necessary for the work that she does it's not easy you know and just when it feels like it's going to get easy it gets rougher the competition is very keen there's always somebody there that knows more than you, that's prettier, that's better. Um, so you have to do something to stay on it, you know. You have to keep reading, and it's not enough just to um, be a good dancer and to sing. You have to educate yourself constantly. That's something I learned from my mother. For me to have a child was something I always knew I would make a wonderful mother, especially the way I was the den mother called the fame people and everywhere i've worked i've been in the same way and for me now to have my own family is just very natural you just learn come in you go run around you three four five six you all start your boogie you start your punking you start your skating understand sort of no let's try it again okay we do it one more time okay child is not giving up anything it's giving me more than anything in this world more joy more sense of myself as a woman for me personally everybody's different you know I'm not saying this is the rule but this is just me and every day with her she does something different or she I know she's really talking to me and um, I mean, I get silly when she just smiles. I guess it's like the biggest thing in the world that she's got a smile. Debbie and Norman complement each other. Um, it's a very delicate balance, the two of them. <laughs> Norman is, uh, well, he's an athlete. He works with his body the same way Debbie does. He has great respect for his physical form. Debbie appreciates that. He's a very aggressive player. Johnson missed it. He and White tie up for it. Can the Sonics get away? Nope. Tipped out of White. We'll try and shoot it out at the end of the quarter. 
Their animated coach, Jimmy Lennon. They always have respect for her because she's a little workaholic. She works extremely hard. And uh, she has so many duties over at Fame. Not only does she choreograph most of the shows, she dances in the show. She's a principal in it. And at this particular time, she's one of the producers. Uh, she's directed a couple of episodes. So uh, she's a very busy lady. Yeah, today I'll get out of here around 4, 4.30. I'm going to get out early today. And I'll be at home cooking for him for tonight. You know, I cooked last night till around 12 after the game and had to get up early and come here this morning. But that's part of who I am. With her discipline and her professionalism, she's a homebody. Debbie cooks very well. She likes for things to be very clean. She's a very attentive mother and a very devoted wife. Honey, what else could my heart desire? I got the man of my dreams, honey. Come on, baby! I got the babe. I got his child. I got a, a view of Hollywood. I can see the sign on a clear day. I got a house and a pool. I'm on a hit television show. I'm so much moving away from my choreography as my choreography uh, has pushed me because of my aggressiveness in shooting it into directing and into production. I love directing because the director has the control. The only thing better than directing in films is producing because the producer ultimately says what stays on film. Warm it up, keep it burning. We can make the temperature rise. Turn up the heat. Come down the morning time for a holiday. Turn up the music. Come down the morning we'll dance and hide away. She's an extraordinary director. First of all, she, she shoots fabulous film, very interesting film. And then she brings to scenes more than would seem to be there on the printed page because of her inexhaustible creativity. And, uh, and she has ideas. And uh, she, she, for me, she, she goaded me. She prodded me. She made me reach out and do more than I would have done myself. What do they learn if I do as you ask? When the going gets rough to give up the fight? Oh, see, there isn't any fight. I don't have to get your permission to do anything. I can jerk this show myself. You can do that. Of course, if you do that, you lose an English teacher. <sighs> hey, Devin. Hi, Debbie. How are you? I don't think um, directing is the ultimate in my creativity. I think it's another step. I I'm still so young to have done all the things that I've done. I don't have any limit in terms of where my creativity is going. And I don't feel like I'm compromising myself as an actress by becoming a director. It's going to make me a better actress because I'm really going to know what they're talking about. So she kind of gets more involved with the actor's point of view than with the camera. She wants to pull the best out of you, not with the best point the camera could get out of you. Debbie is most demanding on herself. And therefore, she's demanding of everybody else. Leroy, I don't think Mrs. Laird would be interested in performing in a school production. She's a professional. Professionals don't perform in school productions, especially if they have to compete against people as lowly as dance teachers for the part, people that haven't been out there for a while, especially when those people can dance rings around her. Debbie Allen is a perfectionist. Yes, she is. But not in um, a meticulous way where it gets the people around her um, uptight and feeling um, 
incompetent, it's, it really works quite the other way. You know that she, she's not going to settle for anything except the best. So now, as a director, I absolutely get to shoot it exactly the way I want it. And as a producer, I get to exactly edit it the way I think it should be. And it's not to say that I have total control. I have some terrific producers that I'm working with, Donald Riker and Patricia Jones and Ken Ehrlich. And, um, you know, I have to answer to those guys, but they give me a lot of artistic input and freedom, and they trust my instincts. I don't know. You might be able to talk me into it, Leroy, if uh, I can be sure that I'd be going up against a certain teacher, one who had something to prove. It might be nice to take her off her high horse. Go for it. You are on, baby. Right. Miss Grant, I hope you dance the pants off her. See you at the tryout, Lee, all right? Growing up in Houston, Texas, did I ever think I'd be here on this big lot, a producer, a director, a star, a choreographer, a mother? Absolutely. Alan falls under the deadly spell of a haunted heirloom in the Corvini inheritance. And Deborah Raffin learns a sinister lesson on being camera shy in Last Video and Testament. It's all ahead on USA's Saturday Nightmares, next.